We begin tonight at six with team coverage of a major story that you will see here only on two. Now this involves the shooting and stabbing that happened outside Buffalo's McKinley High School in February, resulting in students learning remotely for several weeks in the aftermath. Good evening, I'm Mary Ellis Demler. And hello, I'm Scott Levin. Now the two suspects have been arrested. They were back in youth court today. Two on your side's Dave McKinley was the only reporter in the courtroom today for their appearance, and he joins us now in the studio with the latest on this case. David. Scott, the two defendants thus far the only ones charged in that melee at McKinley appeared with new attorneys who appear to be preparing to try and get the cases adjudicated in the family court system and possibly gain the release of their clients pending a trial which is yet to be scheduled. For now, the two defendants, both 17 and both charged with attempted murder and assault, remain held without bail at the East Ferry Juvenile Detention Facility, where they will likely remain until at least their next court appearance in a little over two weeks. The lawyer for the one who is charged with stabbing a 14-year-old student, Sergio Jeter, 10 times, says his client admitted to police he was involved in a fight with the victim, but was not the one among a group who'd gathered who stabbed him. And though under something called accomplice liability, someone involved in a fight can still be charged for the actions of others who jump in. Attorney Lou Massari says a wrinkle in the state's relatively new raise the age law could come into play here. It's likely that statutes looking into juveniles would want the juveniles to be responsible directly in order for them to be uh, uh, prosecuted, right? They, so it's very likely that the statute specifically left out accomplice liability because they don't want to have juveniles removed uh, f from family court to county court uh, for something that they didn't act as a principal on. It was noted in county court today that one defendant originally hails from Nepal, the other from Taiwan, and due to their limited English language skills, their attorneys indicated they'll likely challenge any statements they gave police while being questioned. Although their names were uttered in open court today, this was a juvenile court, and because their cases could still end up in family court, we are choosing not to air the names of these defendants at this time. Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News.